We have week one sleepers for the short and long scoring periods next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Thursday, April 7th. Happy opening day. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's start off with some sleeper hitters for the short week. So this is from Thursday, April 7th through Sunday, April 10th. Yeah, we're distinguishing because you could set your league up either way. You could make it a really short scoring period that just covers the weekend. That's the CBS norm, actually. Or you could roll that weekend into the first full week and make it an 11-day scoring period. Uh, So hitters for the short week. My favorite is Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, among those rostered in less than 80% of leagues. So these aren't like must-start players. These are if you're trying to find somebody off the waiver wire. Andrew McCutcheon hit 293 with a 1027 OPS against lefties last season. And two of the first four pitchers he faces are lefties. It's a bad top of the Cubs rotation. He should be able to do some damage. Others that I like include Adam Duvall, who's on one of the 10 teams in line for four games that opening weekend. Uh, I like Tommy Pham, who's on another team in line for four games. Robinson Cano is as well. And uh, I I like the matchups. It's only three games for these players, but I like the matchups for A.J. Pollock of the White Sox, Andrew Vaughn, his teammate, of course, Um, Bryson Stott, who had a big spring. And I'll I'll throw Gavin Lux in there, too, just because the the Dodgers are at Colorado. The advantage, of course, field for for that first series. There is one lefty on the schedule. I'm not sure if Lux will play that game, but hopefully he'll do enough damage in the other two. All right, the best hitter matchups for uh, each team. The Mets, the Padres, the Dodgers, the Braves, and the Brewers. The worst hitter matchups this opening weekend. The Marlins, Rangers, Cubs, Tigers, and Giants. Let's take a look at sleeper hitters for the long week one. So if you set your lineup for April 7th through April 17th, who are some names there, Scotty? Andrew McCutcheon's on here again. I mentioned two of his first four games are against lefties. Five of his first 11 are. And I like I just kind of like him in general. He, he had the great numbers against lefties last year, and he, and he thinks he struggled against righties because he was nursing a sore knee and it kept him from having the ability to drive the ball the other way. He, he looked like he regained that ability in spring training. So he's I, I kind of like him as a sleeper in a general sense too. Uh, I... I mentioned the opening series for the Rockies is at Coors Field, where seven of their first nine games are at Coors Field. So I like Randall Gritchick for the long week. I like Connor Joe for the long week. I also like Lane Thomas of the Nationals for the opening week. They are one team, one of just four teams in that extra long scoring period that are scheduled for 11 games every, every day of that scoring period. And Lane Thomas has some power and speed to take advantage. All right, let's move over to sleeper pitchers. And just in case you're wondering, the top teams to stream your pitchers against this season, far and away, the Oakland A's and the Pittsburgh Pirates, those are the two in the AL and the NL, respectively, but also the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Baltimore Orioles stand out, the Chicago Cubs and Marlins. I think they're a little bit further down the list, but you're probably going to stream against them quite a bit as well. So for the short week, again, April 7th through 10th, Scott, who are some sleeper pitchers we like here? So obviously no two start options if it's just a four day scoring period. I like Carlos Carrasco's chances to bounce back and he's going against a very questionable lineup. The nationals who don't have much aside from Juan Soto um, and Nelson Cruz and Josh Bell as well, I guess, but most of their lineup looks pretty weak. Merrill Kelly had a big spring kind of revamped his change. I've got a lot of strikeouts and he's going against what should be a middling lineup in, in the, in the Padres the first week. Uh, Zach Eflin's got one of those great matchups you talked about, Oakland. A couple uh, raised pitchers going against the Orioles are pretty interesting. Drew Rasmussen and Corey Kluber. I prefer Rasmussen, but not sure how deep into the game he's going to go. And kind of a deep sleeper. He's only rostering 8% of CBS Sports Leagues. Nate, Nick Martinez of the Padres, who's facing the Diamondbacks in the first week after re- new, uh, renewing his career in Japan. And, and he looked pretty good this spring. Nick Martinez, by the way, has SPARP eligibility, starting pitcher as a relief pitcher. So for those who play in head-to-head points leagues on CBS, uh, you can slot Nick Martinez into your relief pitcher position. For the long week, April 7th through 17th, who are some pitchers we like here? 
So Carlos Carrasco and Merrill Kelly are also included here. Their second matchups are against the Diamondbacks and Mets, respectively. So two pretty good matchups for two pitchers who I think are trending up. Uh, I, I mentioned Zach Eflin in that first group against Oakland. His second matchup, and if, if we're doing the, the extra long scoring period, is at Miami. So two really good matchups for him. Uh, Alex Wood, he's already rostered in 75% of CBS League, so he may not be available for you, but if he is, you know, he, he probably want to pick him up anyway, but he, he gets the Padres and the Guardians the first week. Two pretty good matchups there. And then this is the most interesting one of all. Patrick Corbin, because the Nationals are in line for 11 games in that extra long scoring period, and because they're not planning to go six-man the first time through like some teams are, he's in line for three starts against the Mets, Pretty good matchup. At the Braves, not so good. At the Pirates, really good. I think in, in certain points leagues, if you're if you're feeling brave, Corbin's interesting. And he's been kind of shaky the last two years, I'll grant that. But he uh he's he's he, he thinks he was overthrowing and he looked better this spring the little bit we saw of him. I don't know. I don't think I'd do it to be honest, but three starts is pretty enticing. Our fortune favors the brave pick of the week will go to Patrick Corbin with three starts in the 11-day scoring period. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.